Hey everyone, back at Farmer Pat here. In today's video, we're gonna walk through the garden and I'm gonna show you how to identify certain common um, garden pests. And we're gonna try and get ahead of them before they get it gets too bad. I'm also gonna talk to you about what I'm doing to eliminate those garden pests. Then we're gonna, then I'm gonna go through a great tip to eliminate those garden pests or to prevent them from even starting. And especially when it comes on to our tender vegetables. So let's get started. It's a really good idea every morning to walk through your garden and examine your plants for any new insect damage. Look at the CPC and a leaves that have holes in them. Any leaves that look like they're, they're getting transparent. That could mean that an insect is beginning to nibble. This is my passion fruit and hello here is a culprit so first sign you see that the leaves have smoke holes see those holes the leaves have holes all over them and then if you look very closely right there you see there's a caterpillar that's a small caterpillar right there that little black thing is a small caterpillar so I'm not gonna crush it. Yes, I'm gonna crush that. But I'm gonna go through. I don't see any more holes, like right here. This is the only leaf that seems to have holes. But I'm gonna go through and just spray this real quick, just to make sure that there, are in, there aren't any others. It's a good idea when you're checking to, to look under the leaves. Don't just look on top of the leaves, look under the leaves. Here you can see that there is some insect damage here. You see how the, the leaves appear? That means there was an insect on here, probably another caterpillar or whatever insect that is. This definitely has some insect damage. You can see it looks like some leaf miner. Whenever you see these lines in the leaf, that's like a leaf miner. So I'm going to take care of that too. Um, another good idea when you're going through and looking at your plants. As you can see, my collard greens are looking beautiful. You see how my passion fruit is hanging on here? I'm gonna make sure to lift that off because I don't want any insects from the passion fruit to go on my cauliflower. It's a good idea when you see leaves like this to remove the leaves. This is a perfectly healthy leaf. It's, it's great for the, um, for the compost. As a matter of fact, you can see this also had a little bit of damage on there. But yellowing leaves, um, unhealthy plants, attract bugs. So it's a good idea to go through and remove your yellowing leaves. Plus that also um, causes the plant to focus its energy on producing, on, on you know building up the healthy leaves. Um, hey guys, I remember a couple of days ago, um, a couple weeks ago or a week ago when I did my video on the monarch butterflies and I told you about the milkweed So I just took pieces of the milkweed because it was really tall and um, spiny and here's a piece of the milkweed It's already sprouted. All I did was cut it and stick it in, in the bed. So here is a free milkweed plant This is gonna grow up and this is also gonna attract butterflies Everything else here looks good so, as I said, to help to avoid pests or discourage pests, remove any um, plants, any pieces of the plant that looks unhealthy. So this is my tomato that I just planted a couple weeks ago. You can see this tomato is already getting full of blossoms. It's very, very small, still very small. It's not even a foot tall. This one is a sun sugar, um, but it looks healthy, no damage yet. With tomatoes you always make sure that you don't water the lower branches as a matter of fact usually i remove the lower branches i'm gonna take this off altogether. sometimes the ones that touch the ground you'll see that they become a little bit yellow so i'm removing these lower branches so that um it can focus on the focus the energy on pushing out some more blossoms and and get more foliage above 
as this grows I'm gonna attach it to the fence but it's still very small and it's actually growing forward so I need to come and um, prop this up so the lower branches are gone so that will help with backsplash backsplash can cause the leaves to start yellowing and can also cause insect damage so insects and um, from the soil can backsplash into the tree and cause disease here again with this tomato um, I see some black spots on this leaf. Uh, I'm just going to remove this leaf. And I'm going to remove this low branch also. See, the low branches that touch the ground always get the disease. So I'm removing that. This tomato is a Cherokee purple. This one is a surprise. This one actually died completely back. You can see all the way down where the stem is right here that's it had died all the way back to the to the ground with the frost but I um, I noticed that the the base was still green so I left it in the ground and now my Cherokee purple is growing and it's blossoming so these are all the tomatoes that I planted this is a super sweet 100 so the ones that I bought from the store are already blossoming and over here these are the ones that I planted from seed. I believe these are some black cherry. They're coming up very, very nicely. These will be blossoming very soon. The black, they look very, very healthy. Um, my cucumbers are very slow. This is a marigold that I just planted from seed also. I just transplanted it here. More cucumbers and more black gold. Um, and in the back, I just transplanted some um, some mustards and some pad soy bok choy, bok choy from my other bed because I had sprinkled the seeds and they were a bit too heavy in that bed, so I transplanted them. So this bed looks good. No, I don't see any kind of insect damage. So I think we're good here. Um, this is my scotch bonnet that I just cut all the way back you can see it's already blossoming this is really really awesome this is the one I just cut back less than probably less than two weeks ago it's already blossoming I sent out a ton of new leaves no disease here with my Thai chili pepper this is basically absolutely loaded with flowers with blossoms so there's no disease here um, you can um, I really do believe that having the mulch does help a lot with the disease, with, with preventing disease. Um, it prevents the backsplash. Um, however, it's the beginning of spring, at least in, in Florida. I would, I would call this the beginning of spring. So with spring and with the summer, there's going to be a lot more pest damage. This is um, a pepper tree that I just rescued. It was from my previous garden. It was in a pot covered with weeds. Um, I'm not sure what kind of pepper it is, but I can already see one blossom. I trimmed this back a day ago, and I can already see a blossom, two blossoms. So three blossoms, okay. So I literally just trimmed this back like two days ago to sticks, and leaves are coming out and blossoms are coming out. My um, string beans, they're trying to blossom. The string beans don't look very healthy. I probably hit them with some. These were all planted by from seed um, prior to the frost. They're all blossoming now. They're all blossoming now. You can see every one of them are blossoming. These are purple string beans. They're, every single one is blossoming, but they look very, very small. So I'm going to hit them with a little horticultural oil. Every single one actually is blossoming, even though they're very small. Not sure what's gonna come of them since they're very small. All right, so let's look at our trees and see um, if we see any damage. Oh, actually, I'm checking out this bed. Here is the indeterminate tomato that I planted. It's also covered in blossoms, so I'm looking forward to that. And right below it, there are a couple um, pumpkin seeds that I planted from a pumpkin that I love, and. Um, though that's doing well so let's go check out the other trees oh, I, I had to pause and show you this my um, carry mango tree 
every single branch is completely loaded there's not a branch that isn't loaded with blossoms so i'm just praying 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 that i get even one or two carry mangoes the tree is still pretty young but the blossoms are holding and every branch is, is loaded all my other trees were good so i'm skipping forward to my lemon tree so first a good sign that there's insect damage when you see that the leaves are curled like curled up you see how those leaves look they don't look they don't look smooth this one isn't too bad but you see how these leaves are curled and then also you see how the leaves have those squiggly lines that's leaf minor that's a leaf minor disease so we're gonna uh, we're gonna go ahead and, and spray this one this is disease you want to take care of these right away you don't want to wait and watch um, to see if it's gonna get better by itself there are organic ways to kill these up front we're at the beginning of spring we want to give our plants a healthy start you can see it's a very very small tree this has literally been blossoming for the past month even though it's this tiny it's definitely too small to hold the fruit but this is telling me I'm gonna get a lot of lemons in the future so next let's look at another big telltale sign of disease you see how this is my avocado tree my aunt girly avocado you see all those black leaves all that black on the leaves the brand new leaves don't have any black but this is covered in black like soot we rub it you see it comes off so that soot is actually poop that's actually poop from the insects so this is telling me that this has a lot of insects this can be a white fly um, and here I see these brown spots on here let me see I don't see anything below here but this definitely has insects we have to spray this thoroughly let's check the other avocado um, these leaves are a bit beat up I yeah there's a little bit of insect insects on there see that spot that's definitely needs something so I'm gonna I'm not sure exactly what it is but I'm also gonna spray this it's it wants to it's it's doing well the trees healthy all these are new leaves so it's doing well but this definitely needs to be sprayed plus it's right beside the other avocado so I want to make sure that the insects aren't attacking both the leaves aren't totally healthy so I would say we need to spray this all right next we're gonna move to the front where I saw significant damage on my um, my tree but guys look at this my plum tree is still blossoming I haven't seen any plums form yet but the branches are completely covered with blossoms all right let's go check it out let's go check out the front Ooh. It's, oh, it's still stopping at my jackfruit. Let's see. I think this is more frost damage. Um, I noticed the same thing with my mango tree. The brown at the tip. Um, for you guys who are used to the frost damage, this is my first year. I noticed this on my jackfruit and my mango. Just the tip, but I don't see any insect damage. So I believe this is due to the frost. Um, you can see the new leaves coming on. It looks very healthy. All right, so next I'm gonna show you guys what scale looks like. Scale is a horrific disease. Scale is actually an insect where the female attaches to the plant and sucks the life of the plant. The females, they don't move around. They don't fly away. They just stay and suck the life out of the plant. If you see the leaves are becoming yellow, but guys, look at the underside of the leaves. That is scale. It is covering the plant and you see right there that little bug that bug right there that bug right there that's a ladybug eating the scale but this is just way too much scale ladybug bugs are really great they eat the bad insects but this is beyond um, ladybug help so I'm gonna probably have to use a couple gallons of horticultural oil on there um, the how, how the horticultural oil works is that it the 
these soft-bodied insects. Scale is a soft-bodied insect, so, so is white fly, and a lot more of these insects that we get. They're soft-bodied. How how the horticultural oil works is it absorbs into into the insect and it li literally suffocates them. It's harmless to, to humans. It is organic, but it's gonna kill all the scales. So I'm gonna have to mask up. Look at that. I'm gonna have to mask up and put on my gloves and spray this thoroughly. Well, before we get started on um, going through and spraying the pest, I wanna show you the two options. So my favorite is really neem oil. Um, this one is a ready to use spray and it controls black spot, mildew, mildew, rust, spider mites, aphids, white flies, and other insect pests. So I, this is the main thing and probably the only thing I've, I've mainly used in the past in my, in my previous gardens. Um, when I when I researched neem oil for scale, I didn't see that it was very effective. It some some websites show that it is effective, but because my scale is so bad on that palm tree in the front, I decided I you know I wanted to do something more um, a little bit stronger. So neem oil is 100% organic. It's healthy to use. You can use it on your fruit trees. You can use it on your vegetables. But today I'm not using neem oil. For the first time. I'm going to be using horticultural oil, right? It controls aphids, mites, scale, which is what the main thing that I want to fight today, white flies and other soft-bodied um, insects. So I'm going to use this one today. Because the palm tree is so big, it's impossible. If I took a, a little spray bottle like this, my arms would be aching me and probably go through this in, in a minute. So I'm going to be using this. This is a concentrate and before you use anything you really should test it out on a small area and you should also like test it on a small area to um, spray it either first thing in the morning or late in the evening because sometimes especially since it's an oil you spray it at in, in the middle of the day and it's very hot that can actually burn plants so you don't want that to happen so spray it first thing in the morning or late in the afternoon when the sun isn't hot so i read the instructions and i saw for most of the pests that i have in my garden I, I can't find it here now. But for most of the pests, you use two and a half to five tablespoons per gallon of liquid. So let me show you what this looks like. It's a very thick white um, paste, very different from neem oil. Neem oil looks like an oil. So even though this is horticultural oil, it's a very thick white paste. So I already put, I used three teaspoons, t three tablespoons because this is my first time. I use three tablespoons. So I, I just went through and sprayed, but I wanna show you really quickly how to spray. So I'm using a sprayer bottle. Just a common sprayer bottle, I got this on Amazon. You can get it at Home Depot, Lowe's, you can get it online. Um, it's just um, it's just a spray bottle. I'm not gonna recommend the horticultural oil yet because this is my first time using it. So I don't wanna recommend something that I don't know about. But with the sprayer bottles, it comes disassembled it's very easy you just put the top on and then it before you spray you put i put three teaspoons in i put a gallon of water this is a one gallon sprayer then you have to pump it so you pump it you keep pumping and the, the more you pump is the more resistance now it's really hard then you can push it down and lock it in place now you can carry it so pumping it like that builds up the pressure and now you can spray so because a lot of the insects uh, actually hide under the leaf, you, I, I always spray up first, right? This also is organic. I spray up first, so I get the underside of the leaves. It's also better not to spray when this is very windy because you don't want, even if it's organic, you don't want things um, coming on you. As a matter of fact, when I went through and sprayed, because I actually sprayed before, when I went through and sprayed, I had a mask on, but it's not too bad now. Um, there, I didn't have anything else here to spray, but let's go and look at the horrible scale and, and, and check it out. I sprayed it about an hour ago, but I want to show you how I'm going to attack that. Come, let's check that out. I've seen this disease for months, ever since I moved in, and I just never got around to it. I've been so busy establishing my fruit, fruits and veggies that... I neglected this, but, but this is really a beautiful tree. So look at this. It is encrusted, completely encrusted with scale. Um, I, I put the, the, the um, oil in. 
I shook it up and now I'm spraying it. So you see, it's a con continuous spray. If I feel like, if like right now it's losing pressure, so I'm gonna stop and pump again. I have to unlock, unlock. You hear that sound? To unlock. And then I have to pump it again. You hear that? That's the sound of the air. Pumping it, pumping it, pumping it to build up the pressure. Ooh, yep, it's building up. It's building up. All right, all right. So locking it again and continue spraying. So I'm making sure, since this kale lives on the underside, I'm covering every single branch. I'm going in here, covering every branch, covering here, making sure every single branch is covered thoroughly. Because I really am trying to save, save this plant. There was also a huge branch here, and you can see that cut. We had to remove this branch because it was so, we didn't even have to remove it really because it had gotten so bad that every one of these branches had fallen off. It was just a stump. So we we um, had to just cut it off. So I'm making sure every inch is covered. And I'm gonna, now I'm gonna go right through. I'm gonna pause here and then I'm gonna take, show you how I'm, I'm gonna spray my avocado tree. All right, so remember we, I showed you my avocado tree, how the leaves were black and most likely from, it could have been from past disease or current disease, but that is a typical um, insect poop. So I'm just gonna go through, I'm spraying the top and the bottom. When I looked through, I didn't see any, ah, I didn't see any pests, but just in case my eyes missed it, cause some of these pests are so tiny, you can't even see it. So this is gonna cover most diseases that, or most insects that could, could hit up avocado. It's very small. So it's very easy to, to spray. The top leaves are completely clean, but I, I just gave that, that a shot. Also be sure that you check any trees that are, uh, that are surrounded. If you see a tree that's very infested, just check the trees around it. This tree here is my, my lemon tree. It definitely had some leaf miner disease. You see the, the curls in the leaves. You see the, um, the squiggly lines in the leaves, and it looks like it has something else because the leaves are curled over. I already sprayed it. So I don't want to overdo it since it's a very young plant. So guys, that's it for today. There are a ton more pests that we can see in the garden. Oh, there's one more thing I want to show you guys. Um, but let's, let's walk over to the veggie bed. So what I just did was, um, in, as, as the spring goes on and, and into summer, there's going to be a whole lot more pest damage. Um, right now, my garden is very, very young. It's only less than three months old. And I've been basically on top of it, so there's very, very little pest damage. But as the summer comes, you're going to start seeing your cabbage worms and, you know, there are certain moths that actually attack your plants and eat your veggies. You, you go to bed one day, wake up, and half of your mustard greens are gone or half your, uh, your cabbages are gone. So you want to make sure you get ahead of that. The tomato hornworm, that's another monster. The tomato hornworms, they hide on the leaves of, of the tomatoes. They're very green. There is fat worm that you might think looks pretty or caterpillar that looks pretty, but it's really bad. It will eat your tomatoes down. So staying on top of things is very, very important. I, what I did was I bought some tool, which is like the wet and veil tool that you can also use to cover your, your, your leaves. Um, let me, let me go get it and show you what it looks like. All right. So I just bought it online. I haven't used it. I have, I just, I'm literally just opened it. It's the same material that you use for wet and veils. It's tool. They, they do have material that is specific for gardening that you could buy, but I, this was really cheap. Um, it's 120 feet by 54 inches. My beds are about four feet wide, so 54 inches would just be um, wide enough. So what you can do to protect your, your veggies, and this will also protect it um, from a lot of crawling um, animals too, or crawling. My phone overheated just as I was taking this out. So, this is what the tool looks like. I bought green, so it kind of blends in with the veggies. So it will kind of, as you can see, it's preventing bees, which I don't want to prevent bees. So what I did was I left my flowering um, bok chow and cilantro out, as well as my dill that's flowering, so the bees and the butterflies can still get to them. But for the greens, what happens a lot of time, certain moths lay eggs on the, or little flies, they lay eggs on the greens, and then they become worms or caterpillars that, that eat the greens. So I just very lightly threw this over it. 
Um, this is 54 inches by 120 feet, so I'm not really going on um, deep deep on this. Also, what happened to me um, recently is I had planted out some tomato seedlings in another bed, and the birds actually came and ate the tomato seedlings. I didn't even know that was a thing, but the birds did that. So this will also prevent birds from picking on your young seedlings because they don't like their little um, feet to get stuck they look nails to get stuck in here so that kind of prevents the birds and any other small um animals like raccoon not raccoons um squirrels they'll get their little toenails stuck in here and they don't like it so this is very helpful also if you have a problem where you get a lot of moths that are landing anyway so this is just a really quick update it's not an extensive list but this is just showing you what i am um using as pest pre prevention and ow 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 as pet prevention um he knows better than that never to go in my bed yeah so this is pest prevention and pests getting rid of pests help to get rid of pests anyway till next time guys go out and plant a seed today as i said my garden is less than three months old and you see the abundance you can the the best time was three months ago to start the second best time is today go out and plant a seed don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I'm putting a, I'm putting like daily posts now on Instagram, pictures and little 30 second clips of what I'm doing in the garden because there's a whole lot happening in the garden. So till next time, bye now.